Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. You know what time it is, so sit back and get ready for the Stafford Voice, your dose of conservative in a world of liberal. Three, two, one. Hello, America. Today's show topics include the Islamic State Toddler Squad, the VA is dealing opiates, and profiles in history. So sit back, buckle up, and hang on because we are just getting started. And as you are probably aware, I am your host, Daniel Stafford, and you are listening to The Stafford Voice, where we are conservative in a world of liberal. And, well, I want to remind you that there are many ways to listen, so set this channel as a favorite, hit the subscribe button, uh, give us a thumbs up, whatever you have to do. Whatever you have to do so you don't get left behind. Uh, And if for some strange, crazy reason you do miss the show, as always, you'll be able to catch the replay. So, just sit tight. There is absolutely no need to panic because hey i've got you and in the case you aren't already following on social media you can find me over on twitter or gab uh all you got to do is just search for at stafford voice our handle on twitter or gab is at stafford voice or if your social media site of uh, of choice is facebook or instagram look wherever you're at just search for the Stafford Voice, and more than likely, we're going to be there. If not, shoot me an email or something, thestaffordvoice at gmail.com. Let me know uh, where you're at, and we'll get over there and say, hey, what's up? All right. Where do we begin? Oh, let me remind you, since you're already over on the interwebs, let me remind you of something. Head over to the Stafford Voice, uh, the StaffordVoice.com, and if you haven't done so, sign up for our newsletter. Uh, we email it out once a, once a month. I'm in the middle of working on January's. It will hopefully go out, um, I think, uh, early next week. Uh, Usually it goes out the middle of the month, but uh, I think it falls on the weekend this uh, in January, so it'll be a day or two late. Um, Nonetheless, if you haven't already signed up for it, you've still got time. Head over to thestaffordvoice.com and sign up for our newsletter. Uh, Also, I want to make sure to invite you into any of our chat rooms. We've got two different ones up and ready for you. Um, head over to klrnradio.com slash chat, I believe is what it is, or chat room. Uh, you can join us in the chat room over there. Or you can, since you're, you may be watching here on the YouTubes, you can join us in the chat there as well. Uh, We've got some like-minded individuals that are just pumped and ready to talk to you about uh, anything and everything that we will be covering tonight. Okay, now, uh, let me figure out, I gotta get back over here. Let's get things started. The bottom line is this, and... My, oh my, how the tides have turned. Please, just for a second, put down your silver spoon and take heed to what I'm about to say. The fact of the matter is that you live in a fantasy world of make-believe where you get to make the rules, where you get to act your way into the lives and minds of the public, where you get paid to put on a performance strictly for the purpose of entertainment. You're no special than the next man, woman, or child. You're no more special than the person seeking political office or the person reporting on the news of the day. And you sure in the hell aren't no more special than those who will are willing to stand up and die in defense of the very freedoms that you get to lavishly exercise every day. 
It's right time for you to climb down off your high horse, put down your phony trophy, and come to the realization that life isn't always rainbows, roses, and unicorns. Big deal. You lost. Your precious little lady didn't win. Get over it. Accept the opportunity to give the next president of the United States a chance, much like you desperately begged for us to do eight years ago. He was given a fair chance, more than his fair chance if you ask me. However, the race has been decided and you didn't win. No, you see in the real world, some win while some others lose. Not everyone deserves a trophy. If they did, you certainly wouldn't have had the chance to stand atop the podium spitting your liberal agenda. If you were so consumed with the idea of empathy that you preached, you would stand in protest of the repercussions of the race-baiting agenda that has been force-fed to us over the last eight years. Or you'd be a little more empathetic to the hundreds of thousands of veterans that are constantly mistreated. You'd be a little more concerned over a failed Middle East policy that has sent us to the brink of World War III. No, we don't want to talk about how radical Islam is teaching children how to chop the heads off of those they disagree with. But then again, maybe you think that's art. You can spout off all the fancy quotes you want, but until the day comes where you realize or where you are willing to put yourself aside and walk a few miles in someone else's shoes, have a seat. Realize for a few seconds, in fact, write it down on one of your little note cards you, so you don't forget because your hypocritical argument is null and void. As a matter of fact, let me end by quoting something you once said that you should have reminded yourself of before riding in on your high horse, standing upon the podium, and accepting your false trophy. You once said, and I quote, it is well that the earth is round that we do not see too far ahead. Isn't it a shame you can't see any further ahead past the little fairy tale land in which you live in? And that is tonight's bottom line. Now, let's get into the first topic du jour of the evening. The Islamic State Toddler Squad. Oh, yes. If you haven't learned by now, because, well, you aren't willing to accept the fact that reality is reality, that radical Islam is out poised, ready to chop your heads off, well, guess what? They are teaching toddlers how to cut their freaking heads off. Cut their freaking heads off! Yes, it's a movie quote, but keep up with me here. There's a speed limit. Here's the headline to this article over on pjmedia.com. ISIS shows preschooler killing victim tied to carnival ball pit. I'm not going to show you any of the images. If you want to see them, please head over to pjmedia.com and take a look for yourself because it's absolutely sickening. The fact that any group at all would teach their children how to grab a how to grab a hunting knife uh, you know one of those rambo style knives and cut someone's head off just because they don't fully agree with what we believe because you know they're a little more empathetic than than we are over here hmm. wake up seriously Wake the hell up. Let me just read to you the first paragraph to this article. After an end-of-the-year video showing preteens hunt down and kill bound prisoners in an, abounded, or in an abandoned building, the Islamic State today released an even more gory follow-up with children as young as preschool age murdering prisoners tied to broken carnival rides. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, I'm just checking the chat rooms and Jessica's reminding that yes, they do use toddlers to kill. Um, said toddlers also play soccer with a decap. Oh my God, I'm not even going to repeat that. Uh, so they said uh, that this is an 18 minute highly produced video out of ISIS 
um, out of an ISIS province in Syria, which was distributed through publicly accessible Islamic State media channels, social media, and file sharing sites, including Google Drive, and briefly had a stint on the YouTubes. Okay, so let's get this straight. We go out, and since we're so empathetic, we go out and we find people that don't fully agree with us because, you know, they're Christians and we want to chop their heads off. So ISIS goes out, finds somebody that uh, doesn't completely agree with their agenda, you know, kind of like that person that shall remain nameless was uh, preaching about empathy um, on her little high horse. Uh, in the in the real world, um, yeah, they're teaching. How, how old were these kids? Let me find. Uh, it says a boy about seven years old goes down the stairs. He's handed a knife by somebody that's too coward to show their face. They're uh, they've got one of those. Um, stupid black sheets over their heads. Um, he covers the victim's eyes with one hand before being given the signal by the adult jihadist. The boy then saws the victim's throat. Then he wipes off both sides of the knife on the victim's white t-shirt. This child is seven years old. Seven years old, but in the in the fairy tale land of Hollyweird, we want to preach about empathy while being given a trophy for acting. Maybe we should have given this kid your damn trophy. Maybe just maybe we should have gave him a lifelong achievement award because after all, he's seven years old and he knows far more about empathy. He knows how to cut someone's freaking head off. Oh, but we don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about how mixed martial arts isn't an art. Well, I'm here to tell you, yes, it is. It is an art form. Then again, all you do is memorize a few lines. I mean, maybe you need to wake up and come to reality and read a little bit more about the Constitution or the Bill of Rights or... Uh, you know, I don't know, anything else that has to do with the founding of this country. Why don't you go out and search for um, when Thomas Jefferson was out there learning about Islam and how radical it was. You know that whole line about the shores of Tripoli? Oh yeah, well... That's just something we don't want to talk about because it doesn't quite fit our agenda. Well, guess what? Your president that we gave a chance for for the last eight years, we sucked it up. And let me tell you, it sucked over the last eight years. But... A failed Middle Eastern policy has given us seven-year-olds holding a Rambo knife, cutting people's heads off. It's high time you jump off your high horse, lady. Th this story is so disheartening I, I just I, I can't I, I can't talk about it anymore because it's it is that I, I think you get what I'm trying to say I, I'm I've just I had to take the article off the screen because the images are stuff that only should be produced in Hollywood You know what? We're we we need to take a a quick break. And when we come back, we will talk about um 
We'll talk about the veteran. The, we'll talk about the VA dealing opiates. This is a story we were going to cover last week, but we didn't get a chance to. And well, we've saved it for uh, tonight. So we'll we'll talk about how the VA is dealing opiates to our veterans. We'll be right back. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Nothing will protect you quite like your sidearm, so why not give it the protection it deserves? Something as strong as the Second Amendment and stands the test of time, and better yet, made in the USA. A Rebel Road Tactical Custom Kydex Holster is that and more. Call now and place your order with Rebel Road Tactical at 682-217-4579. Again, 682-217-4579, or online at rebelroadtactical.com. Conservative in a world of liberal. The Stafford Voice. All right, we are back. Yes, this is the Stafford Voice where we are conservative in a world of liberals. Anyway, let's talk about how the Veteran Administration is openly admitting that they're dealing opiates. Yes, that's right. Our very own... Veterans Administration, um, who is so well taking care of our veterans, is dealing opiates. Get this. Okay, now this was this was actually from an article that was posted at the Wall Street Journal. It says, uh, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs acknowledges its role in creating a large population of opioid-addicted veterans by over-prescribing painkillers for injuries and post-traumatic stress disorder. After the agency tightened prescribing practices in 2013, many veterans, excuse me, many veterans bought pain pills sold illicitly on the streets. When those became too expensive, They sought heroin and fentanyl, a potent synthetic narcotic. The VA is now struggling to undo the damage. Hampered by budgetary and bureaucratic obstacles, it has failed to build a rehabilitation program robust enough to meet the overwhelming demand for treatment from the tens of thousands of veterans with opioid addiction, say analysts who have studied the issue. Let's, uh, okay, so they looked at this and found that the Fayetteville uh, VA is one of the worst in the countries. Now, this was, this is according to uh, Justin Minyard, a retired Army First Sergeant who's battled opi- opioid, wow, maybe I need some opioids to calm down, opioid addiction and testified before Congress about this. He said there's no help for veterans dealing with the addiction they have now. Uh, The Fayetteville VA serves the fastest growing veteran population in the nation with 70,000 patients last year, up from 42,000 in 2010. It is moving quickly to meet demand, um, according to Elizabeth Goolsby, which is the director for the Fayetteville VA Medical Center. Um, Let's see. It has added facilities and reduced wait times for primary care to four days from 29 days in 2014, when an audit found the hospital had among the longest wait times of 700 VA facilities. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Veteran Affairs Secretary Robert McDonald in a September speech said, we owe it to the nation's veterans to help them end their dependence on opioids opioids wow i can't say that tonight opioids and break the downward spiral that all too often ends in homelessness prison or suicide now uh let let's get into some of the personal side the personal stories to this there's there's got to be a personal there's got to be a person that goes along with this. So let's let's paint this picture and and 
put a face with a story. This this is real, people. This isn't just something that you you turn on the news or, or turn the radio on and hear about. These are real life people. Your neighbors or somebody you walk past on the street. Okay? We have so many veterans right now and the last thing we need to do is get them hooked on drugs. But all too often, that's what's happening. Um, here's a story about an Air Force veteran, Ken Grady. He's 45 years old. He says the local VA prescribed him OxyContin, Percocet, Vicodin, and fentanyl patches in the 2000s because of a series of surgeries for back injuries. He says, quote, The VA made it so easy. It was endless, and I abused it. Uh, let me see. He went on to say that during one stay at the VA's crisis mental health unit, a doctor in another section prescribed him Percocet for his chronic back pain. He said, please don't give me that. He, that's what he told the doctor. Okay, He told the doctor, don't give me that. And, and Now he says that he is he sometimes bought drugs from veterans selling just filled narcotic prescriptions outside of VA facilities. Now he uh, also said that last month he he had to go to the dentist and he had some teeth pulled by a VA contractor and who later prescribed him Vicodin for the pain. Says that he protested but you don't have to twist my arm too much. He relapsed, bought more pills on the street, and landed back in jail. He had hoped to be out by Christmas, but we don't know if that happened or not. Um, let's, let's dig a little deeper into this. It says that the VA's system's treatment options are limited. The Fayetteville VA has an outpatient alcohol detox unit, but no op opioid detox unit. It refers veterans to other local facilities for detox the initial period of up to about a week when an addict comes off drugs, endures withdrawal, and is stabilized. The VA then refers, to them, refers them to its outpatient substance abuse treatment program. The much longer process of overcoming addiction and underlying issues through therapy, group programs, and medication. The outpatient program has a thousand visits a month and saw a total of 2,800 new patients from January to October of 2016. Said that the addicted veterans can be referred to one of the VA's 43 inpatient rehab centers around the country, which has a combined uh, they have combined 906 beds. Now, that was according to one of those audits by the, by the VA back in 2014. Uh, said that waits are usually longer than 30 days, but um, they deter referrals and beds often stay empty because of lack of staffing. Okay, how is this even an issue? How can we not find enough people to help our veterans? How? How is it that we can't find somebody to sit there and talk to them? Just sit and talk. And say, look, man, I mean, you you need a hit of an opioid or something, whatever it is. Instead of putting the patch on or popping a few pills, let's go sit down and talk. Let's sort out some of these demons in your head. The, these pills and, and stuff don't fix the demons that are stuck in their heads. It doesn't. Oh, man. Uh, so, okay. In regards to the demons that these guys walk around with in their heads, they are stuck. They, it, they don't know how to get them out. Here's another story. This patient is named um, Detheridge. 
said that he was the youngest of five children raised by a single mother in Tecumseh, Oklahoma. He idolized his grandfather, an Army helicopter pilot in Vietnam who died of cancer when Mr. Detheridge was 10 years old. Mr. Detheridge says that he was determined to join the military. I thought I want to become somebody. I want to make a big impact in the world. Shortly after enlisting in 2006, Mr. Detheridge was prescribed Percocet for a back injury from paratrooper training. He says he took pills during most of his deployment in Afghanistan in 2009 and 2010. His armored vehicle was bombed repeatedly while clearing roads in remote areas, and he suffered back, neck, facial, and soldier injuries, shoulder injuries, and cracked his skull in an explosion that he later learned caused a traumatic brain injury. He said, quote, I've got blown up seven times. I'd go to see my medic, get bandaged, get perks, Percocet, and get on with it. And he says, back home he was prescribed opioids for his injuries while stationed on the West Coast and in Hawaii. And as his tolerance increased, he started buying pills from other soldiers. He lost his marriage, his savings, his job, was medically discharged for substance use in February of 2014. Here's what gets disheartening. He says, quote, They threw me out there and said, Take care of yourself. So I did. He says that he sought substance abuse treatment from the VA over the years, and including the spring of 2014, when he says he was told there was a four-month wait for residential treatment. The VA continued to prescribe opioids for his injuries. He overdosed six times once at his mother's house in Oklahoma, and she's luckily she's trained as an emergency medical technician and revived him. Uh, that's how my family found out that that they thought he was just depressed. Well, unfortunately, it really isn't depression. I mean, the guy has seen and experienced things that you know, only really plays out in Hollywood movies. But it was real. Why do we think this is okay? And, and I mean, if you can, if you're in the chat room right now, if you want to call it post traumatic stress or you want to call it a traumatic brain injury, okay, yes. Whatever it is, you do not need to prescribe painkillers to suppress the demons that are stuck in these men and women's heads. These guys are... They're kids, for the most part. And we're getting them hooked on highly addictive drugs being issued and prescribed by the VA. They need somebody to talk to. They need somebody that's willing to walk with them down the path and keep them safe. Yeah, sure, it's easy. Pop a few pills. It kind of takes the pain away. Smoke a, smoke a fatty. It takes the pain away. But it doesn't even remotely come close to fixing the problem. And a lot of it's mindset. Do you want to accept defeat? and allow this to take over your life? Or are you going to say, no, I'm in charge. I'm going to take this as a positive thing. Uh, speaking of which, 
I follow a guy on Instagram. I follow him on the YouTubes. He is, uh, his name's KC Mitchell. Uh, AKA on, on Instagram uh, and the YouTubes, uh, they call him the one-legged monster. Dude gets hit by a roadside bomb. Half of his left leg is blown off. The heat was so intense from the explosion that there are muscles in his both of it in both of his legs and in his forearms. The heat was so intense it melted the muscle tissue together. This guy did not allow it to keep him down. Oh, hell no. This dude is a fighter, man. He just recently, over the weekend, went to LA Fit Expo and competed against able-bodied powerlifters The first, he said, you know what? I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm going to use this as positive. This is going to motivate me, and I'm going to use it to help build other people. Instead of getting addicted by drugs, he got addicted to weights. The guy is phenomenal. Ex Except defeat? Hell no. It's all in... It's in your mind, man. It's mindset. I'm going to talk about this in one of my Thursday thoughts. I don't know how soon I'll get to it, but... Listen, I... I have my own issues. I like caffeine. I have an energy drink every morning. I like the taste. I like the little bit of jolt that I... A little bit of kick in the rear from the little bit of caffeine. Now, it, if anybody out there knows me, I drink Spike, which is probably one of the highest caffeine contents. But... I like the taste. You could take the caffeine out. I'd still buy them. I'd still drink them. I like the taste. It's like somebody that's addicted to Pepsi. Let's say addicted to Pepsi. Um, or addicted to chocolate. Okay, look, I like chocolate. I like chocolate chip cookies. I like chocolate chip pancakes. I like uh, I like Nutella. I mean, everybody knows I like Nutella. I like chocolate milk. Uh, oh, Eric Odom from Grassfire. Thank you for joining us tonight. I see that you jumped in over on the YouTube side. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who Eric Odom is, Eric Odom is the brains. Uh, I, I don't know if I really want to call him the brains, but he is the guy, like the go-to guy from Grassfire.com. It is a conservative, um, libertarian, uh, it is a right-leaning um, social media site and they they have been busting their hides over the last few weeks and months trying to um, move things in a different direct not so much a different direction but in a far better direction uh, they're they're consolidating some things and let me tell you I, I love grass fire I, I really like it I'm not so active over there as I should be um, but Eric, thanks for jumping in. I really appreciate it. Um, so thank you for coming on and joining us in the chat room. Uh, I'd love to have you on the show one of these days. Um, but listen, we have to admit, we've... Uh, I feel your love for coffee. I'm not a... Look, Eric, I'm, I'm a Mormon. I don't drink... I don't drink coffee. I don't drink tea. Um... Uh, I'm the energy drink guy. Um, 
I, I like Spike Energy drinks. Uh, I, they've got great flavor, but I, I like the smell of coffee, but I, I don't do coffee. I mean, it's for two reasons, mainly some health issues and the, some health-related stuff. And then um, because we're, um, we're Latter-day Saints as well and Mormons don't drink coffee. Um, yeah, the stuff does get expensive. Uh, I know a guy that, uh, he's pretty much addicted. He, uh, he really got into some of the, uh, ordering some of the beans from all over the, the world. I can't remember the guy. He had a show on like the travel channel or something where he would go out and, um, he would go out into these remote areas and he would basically buy up all of their coffee beans and he would roast them and it, it was a great show and, and but anyway this guy that I know he got fascinated with it and now he he is so deep into making coffee and he's almost ready to start investing in roasting his own beans and uh, it that's taken things a little too far. I'm not trying to figure out how to make my own um, my own energy drinks, but boy, if I if I could figure it out, I would. Um, but seriously, thanks for come. Thanks for joining us in the chat room. I really do enjoy what you guys are doing over on um, Grassfire.com. Um, so please, if you are listening or you're catching this on a replay and you haven't jumped over to grassfire.com and set up a profile, um, do so. You're, you will thank me for it. Uh, okay, look, I'm, I'm noticing the time and I really want to get to profiles in history. So uh, let's see. Look, we have a serious, serious issue with what we do with our veterans. We, we've I really hope that the Trump administration does something to fix the failures of what has happened to our veterans. We've we they deserve so much more. Um, and with that, you know, I, I'm just going to leave it at that. You guys know how I feel about our veterans and having served myself. Um, so I tell you what. I need to get a quick, um, I need to wet the whistle real quick. And so we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we will cover profiles in history. This guy is really cool. Um, he was a blast to take a look at. So when we come back, we will cover um, profiles in history. You are tuned in to The Stafford Voice, where we are conservative in a world of liberal. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Conservative in a world of liberal. The Stafford Voice. Okay, we're back. And that's right, we are conservative in a world of liberal. And, you know, I think if you watched anything that happened over the weekend, the lady that will remain nameless um, proves how liberal some are in the world. Um, but without further ado, your favorite segment of the show and mine as well let's do this profiles in history on march 2nd 1781 he wrote to each of the 13 states quote by the act of congress herewith enclosed your excellency will be informed that the articles of confederation and perpetual union between the 13 united states are formally and finally ratified by all the states 
We are happy to congratulate our constituents on this important event, desired by our friends, but dreaded by our enemies. Now, Samuel Huntington was born on July 16, 1731, in Wyndham, Connecticut. He had a limited education, never moving on to college. At the age of 16, he was apprenticed to a cooper to learn how to make barrels. During this time, he also helped his father on the farm. But he just wasn't satisfied. So, when he finished his apprenticeship, at the age of 22, he began to study law. Not at a college or university, but he was self-educated at a library and through some books he would borrow from friends. Now, this paid off when in... 1754, he was admitted to the bar and began practicing law in Norwich, Connecticut. That library he studied at, well, it belonged to a gentleman by the name of Reverend Ebenezer Devotion. And, well, let's just say law wasn't the only thing that caught his mind. In 1761, he married Ebenezer's daughter, Martha Devotion. Now, they never had children of their own, but when his... when uh, when his brother died, he adopted his niece and nephew and treated them as if they were their own. Now, Huntington began his career in politics in 1764 when Norwich sent him to the lower house of the Connecticut Assembly as a representative. He continued serving the office each year until 1774. One year later, he was elected to the upper house, the governor's council that is, where he would be re-elected until 1784. Now, in 1773, he was appointed to the colony's Supreme Court, later becoming Chief Justice of the Superior Court from 1784 to 87. As a result for being an outspoken critic of the coercive acts of the British Parliament, the Assembly elected him in October 1775 to be one of their delegates to the Second Continental Congress. Samuel voted for and signed the Declaration of Independence, and three years later, he replaced John Jay as President of Congress. In addition to, he also voted for and signed the Articles of Confederation, and when they went into effect in 1781, he became the first President of the United States Congress under them. On July 9, 1781, his health forced him to resign and return back to Connecticut. In 1785, he was elected as lieutenant governor, later being elected governor in 86, where he would continue to be re-elected until his death. Now, in 1788, Huntington presided over the Connecticut Convention that was called to ratify the United States Constitution. He was so well-liked, he received two electoral votes in the first presidential election in 1789. Now, true, everyone knew Washington would win, but the vice president spot was still up for grabs. Now, on January 5, 1796, at the age of 65, Samuel Huntington died in his home in Norwich, Connecticut. And that is this week's Profiles in History. That guy was a fascinating individual. I mean, there it was kind of difficult to find stuff about him, but he was very, very well liked. I mean, it, it was difficult to find anything that was negative against him. He was just so well liked. I mean, he would have never been nicknamed the Huntington Beach Bad Boy. I mean, you... You know, like the uh, that MMA guy that the lady that will remain nameless says isn't an art. Oh man, that I don't know if you've caught on to the fact that she really struck a nerve with me. And to be quite honest, she doesn't deserve any attention at all. Um, she's pretty much washed up the way it is. Uh, anyway, my favorite segment and yours, I, everybody loves Profiles in History. It, it really is my favorite thing. I spend, well, I spend, what, five or six hours over the weekend researching these guys, and I, I'm almost as, as excited to um, be able to be done with these soon 
so that we can get into our next, the next thing that we cover. And I'm still trying to work it out in my head of how I want to be able to do it, but um, it's going to be good. Uh, trust me, it's going to be good. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it, and you're probably going to want to wind up taking notes. I mean, it's hopefully going to be that good. Now, what else? You know what? Let's spend let's spend a couple of minutes catching up, shall we? Uh, and I didn't want to do this at the beginning of the show because I just I I watched the nameless I watched Miss Nameless before coming on air and just to kind of get riled up. It, it's unfortunate that I did that because now my blood pressure is through the roof. Um, and then, you know, still having to cover this whole VA thing, it, I'm getting tired of all of these sickening stories about the VA. I want to hear some, I want to hear some good stories where the VA is actually starting to change things and, and fix this broken system. Oh, anyway, um, so Catching you up, we uh, we vlogged over the weekend, as you guys know. We went and did some. Uh, we went to another craft soda place, and we hit the mother load. It, you're you're gonna have to go and watch the vlog if you missed it because it was awesome. I mean, we we normally keep our selections slim. But this place was so incredible and they had such a good selection that we, we left with two six packs. And it, if you haven't jumped into the craft soda th thing uh, with root beers and cream sodas, and we, we tried one over the weekend. It was a, a praline cream soda. Oh, oh, man, it was so good. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I actually thought about it all day today. I was like, man, I wish I had another one of those. Uh, it would. That would be so good over some vanilla ice cream. Oh, man. Stop it. This is not good for my diet. Oh, anyway. The diet is now nah, going whatever. I mean, it's a diet is a diet. It Nobody likes to diet. But I, I am having a blast in the weight room. I, I'm, I'm killing it. I'm getting all kinds of gains. And if you're a YouTuber and you know what I'm talking about there, the Hodge twins and all kinds of gains. Anyway, um, I'm just feeling kind of spaced off in the head right now. I mean, it's just, uh, I, it's just so sickening to talk about some of these news stories all the time. It's just ridiculous. You know, one of these days we're going to have to, oh, one of these days we're going to have to just cover some good some good stories, good feel good stories and just do a whole show about good stuff. Forget all of the junk, uh forget about ISIS and and the VA and Russia and all that stuff and just start just report on good wholesome stories, you know, of uh the of toddlers, you know, Climbing over their dresser and it falling down on top of them, and the two year the the other twin pushes it, picks it up, and scoots it all the way across the room and saves his little brother. Oh well, there probably is some controversy. I mean, who knows? Who really? I mean, yeah, we don't know. Anyway, we got a game. I got to tell you guys about this game. We picked up a game over the weekend. It's called Dirty Minds. Um, it's a card game. You're given clues, and you have to figure out what a word is. Obviously, based off the name of the game, it's not something you want to play with your um, kids. <laughs> You're not going to want to play it with your kids. The The front of the box says 17 or older. Oh, man. I can't imagine sitting there playing this game with my son when he was 17. I mean, he could... 
he could have probably done well enough that he probably would have surprised me. But it's uh, so let let me just tease you with this. Here's what we're gonna do. Because I want you, you guys know that I, I talk all the time about having you guys sit at our kitchen table or, or join us on the kitchen couch. And, and that's kind of what we do with the vlog. That's the whole idea is for you to, to be comfortable enough to know who I am and to know what this show is all about and really, and to see that, you know, when we do talk about some of these issues, how it does relate to you. Um, but the the whole idea is that when when we vlog and stuff like that is to show you that we're real people we're not just somebody that's behind a a camera or behind a speaker that's talking to you and you you're not you, we want you to feel connected i mean a lot of the times you turn the news on you get your news you shut it off and that's it you don't really feel connected I mean, you you listen to a guy on the radio for three hours and all they do is talk about the news. It's more it, it's more than that for me. I I, I want to open. I want to share with you what my life is. I want you guys to feel like you're more than a friend. I want you guys to feel super connected with us, uh, with my wife and I. But more importantly, I want you to feel like you're a part of things here at the show. Uh, so we decided uh, that what we're going to do is we're going to play the game with you. And how we're going to do that is we're probably going to wind up live streaming it on Facebook. I, I don't know if we want to do it here on the YouTubes because it would be a little more difficult to have the 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 straight interaction with things. So I think Facebook Live is probably how we're going to do it. So you're going to want to stay tuned for later this week. I don't know if we're going to squeeze it, be able to squeeze it in on Thursday. Uh, still trying to figure it out, but we want to we want to open the pack. We're going to open the, the game in front of you. So it's going to be as new for us as it is you guys. So you're going to want to tune in. Stay tuned to the Facebooks. Um, I believe it is, uh, let me, you know what, let me jump over because I've got it pulled up right here, um, facebook.com slash the Stafford Voice, facebook.com slash the Stafford Voice. You're going to want to go over there, make sure you subscribe, and or not subscribe, make sure you follow us on Facebook and that way, when we go live with the game later this week, you're right there with us and you can play along. We're going to have fun with it. Okay, speaking of which, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week. And God willing, the Stafford Voice, I, your host, Daniel Stafford, will be back next week. Follow me on Twitter at Stafford Voice, or you can look me up on Facebook. All you got to do is, or Instagram, wherever you're at, search for the Stafford Voice. Uh, if you're over on GrassFire.com, you, uh, I'm trying to remember how I had, how it's set up over there. Uh, anyway, if you need help trying to find me anywhere, shoot me a message. Um, I'll I'll find it. We'll get linked up so we can. Uh, so we can keep in touch. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you just want to keep things a little more private with a story or something that you want to share with us, um, feel free to email those to us to the Stafford Voice at gmail.com. Again, that's the Stafford Voice at gmail.com. Uh, Eric, thanks. I appreciate that. Let we'll do that. We'll get a group. Um, we'll get a group going on over at Grassfire and we'll be able to, I'll, I will put it up on the slides and stuff for the show. So, um, we'll get some logos and stuff for the breaks and stuff and we'll, we'll get it figured out. Um, I'll get in contact with you, um, to figure out how we can make this work best for Grassfire and us as well to make sure that we are able to get the information out. Um. Again, super excited that you joined us tonight. Um, but 
Um, uh, look, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And until next week, thanks and God bless. <laughs>